Hey guys, Rick Stone here. How are ya? So it takes a minute for all of the software to kind of catch up and grab hold and let me know who's here and what's going on. I know we had about 13 people waiting, so that's a good thing. Um, so we'll kind of give it a second here for things to catch up and let us go. So if um, some of you guys could jump in the chat and just let me know if um, I sound okay and if uh, everything looks all right video-wise and everything. Um, it's always a little unsure when we first get started on these. So if you wouldn't mind um, just jumping out there and letting me know if that is okay. All right. Okay, let me shrink this down a little bit. There we go. All right. Good. Sounds good. All right. Perfect. Sorry, it always takes a minute for everything to kind of kick in here. So let's do this. While we are waiting, um, usually when we do these workshops, we end up with somewhere around 50 to 80 people that come. So um, while we're kind of waiting for people to arrive, um, let's go ahead and introduce ourselves, okay? So where are you from? What's your garden zone? And when is your last frost date? Um, drop those into the chat and let's get to know each other a little bit um, so that we kind of know what's going on. And I'm gonna apologize up um, right here at the beginning. Uh, I've been kind of fighting a cold. I actually went and got a coronavirus test this morning just to make sure I, I wasn't, didn't have corona and I don't, which is a good thing. Um, but my, my throat's a little scratchy, so I'll probably be taking a drink and maybe throwing a cough drop in as we kind of go through this. So, all right. Okay, so let's see. Let me refresh the chat here and see what we've got going on. Perfect. Okay. All right, guys. So let me know where you're from, what your garden zone is. We've got 30 people here, so I think we'll probably get started here pretty quick. Summer uh, is in zone 7, April 15th. It's interesting, we're zone 6B and our last frost is May 15th. Um, it's, it's really interesting how that varies, isn't it? Um, 9A, we've got um, zone 6A, zone 9, a 5B, a 5A, good. So a lot of you guys are really gonna benefit from this. This is kind of perfect timing for those of us that have cold winters and slower springs, so cool. All right, guys, so let's see here. Um, really quick, I'm, I'm, I've put aside some time to answer questions at the end, and my lovely assistant, Whitney, is, is watching along with us, and uh, she is going to keep track of any questions that you guys throw into the chat. As I start actually teaching, I found that the chat is like massively distractive, and if I try to look at and answer your questions while I'm teaching, we'll end up being here for two hours. So we don't want that. I'm trying to keep this to about 45 minutes. So I'm gonna set my timer right now so that we can get going there. Okay, so um, so anyways, Whitney will be keeping track of questions and then um, I've got another computer right here. She's gonna pop, uh, pop those questions in here and we'll do a, a Q and A session at the end where I'll answer all your questions. So. Don't think I'm ignoring you when you're in the chat here. Um, I, I am definitely gonna get to your questions, okay? And then uh, also I wanna make sure that I remind you guys to hang around um, till the end because there is an opportunity for you to get a free video course um, for staying. So we'll talk about that towards the end. All right, so um, looks like we've got a pretty good group of people here. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we are going to be talking today about cool season crops. And um, the plan is to kind of go through and we're, we're going to talk about what cool season veggies are. We're going to talk about when you should be planting them. And then we're going to talk about there's kind of four classes of cool season crops. Leafy greens, brassicas, root crops, and then kind of a, a other um, as well. And so we will, uh, we're going to go through and talk about that. So that's kind of where we are headed um, for this class today. Now, who is this class for? Is this the right workshop for you? Um, this is for those of you that have um, cool springs and cool falls, okay? And this class should also help those of you that live in the warmer areas. I saw that we had a few zone nines and, and maybe even we'll have some, some zone tens. 
uh, this class will help you guys out as well. Although um, those of us with winter, we have two, two cool seasons. Um, those of you that live in zones 9 and 10, um, if you're south at least, you may only have one cool season and that's winter for you guys um, where we're kind of cool in the, the spring and the fall. So, um, and then the other thing is I would encourage you guys to, um, to make sure that you have access to seedlings. Uh, whether you're going to grow them yourself or you're going to go buy them, um, that's important for cool season crops. Now, not all of our cool season crops need to be planted by seedlings, but quite a few do, especially in the brassica family. So um, if you don't have access to seedlings, figure out how to, to do that. And then really quick, I do want to let you guys know we're going to do about 20, 25 minutes worth of teaching today. And then I do have an offer for you at the end of this course. Um, so if that offends you, then you're not in the right place. Um, I, I, I do a lot of free content and I've got the YouTube channel, but the way I feed my family is um, through the Gardening Academy, which is our, our subscription service. And so we are going to talk about that for about five minutes. So if that, again, if that offends you, um, then maybe this isn't the right workshop for you. But um, we're not going to spend a lot of time on that. I'm going to teach you quite a bit, okay? All right, so first off, let me, uh, let me hide the video here for a second. Um, there's me. Yay. Um, so who am I? Uh, my name is Rick Stone and I am the founder of the Gardening Academy and I'm also the principal author on the website Our Stony Acres. Okay, And Our Stony Acres has been around for nine, almost ten years. We're going to hit our ten year anniversary in August of this year. And we are focused on that website on making you a better vegetable gardener, okay? We, we don't talk a lot about flowers. We don't talk a lot about, unless the flowers have something to do with the vegetable gardening. Um, and, and we don't talk about grass and, and things like that. We're all about growing food. So uh, vegetables and fruits, and, and that's what we focus on, and that's what I think is important. So we have kind of a fun little website. If you haven't been over to see the website yet, it's ourstonyacres.com. And there's a link down in the description um, where you can go over there. But go take a look at the website. And like I say, we've been writing there for uh, nine coming up on ten years. I'm also a Master Gardener. I graduated from the Master Gardener program about the same time that I started the website, actually, back in 2012. And uh, we, meaning our family, have been gardening now for 23 plus years uh, with an official garden since we kind of moved out of the college um, apartment type situation and into an actual home we have been gardening and and uh, every year uh, we've had a garden and so we love to garden and we love to grow organically and our focus is growing organic food okay so that's me all right so let's get started about our let's get started talking about cold season crops and I'm seeing lots of interaction here in the chat guys remember Whitney's going to keep track of your questions so I'm going to teach for about 15 or 20 minutes here and then we'll go back and, and I'll tackle your questions. So um, don't feel like I'm ignoring you. We're definitely going to get to all of those questions and we'll have some time for that. Okay. All right. So cool season crops. What are cool season crops? These are the vegetables that like to be grown in the cooler time of the year. They prefer temperatures at about 70 degrees or below. That's their, their sweet spot is right there around that 70 degrees. As soon as we start getting above 80 we really start having trouble with quite a few of the cool season crops. Not all of them. There are some that will kind of bleed over into the warm season, and we'll talk about that when we go through the individual crops. But a lot of the cool season crops, when we hit 80 degrees, that's kind of the end. It, that's that, that hot temperature and the increased sunlight are a signal to them to start um, setting seed. And so we start to see the broccoli flower and the the lettuce get bitter and start putting up you know uh, seed heads and flowers and stuff like that so we want to time these cool season crops so that they are mostly mature and ready to be harvested by the time we start getting our temperatures into the 70s and and, and in, even into the low 80s that's that's kind of when we want to get the timing so when do we plant them we can start planting cool season crops six to eight weeks before your last frost, okay? Now, that's when we can start. We can continue to plant, and especially things like lettuces and spinach, those shorter growing span um, crops, we can continue to plant those really right up until that kind of last frost time frame because we'll still have plenty of cool weather 
we may not have cold weather anymore, but we'll have cool weather that will help us um, to keep those crops in good shape. So starting six to eight weeks before your last frost date, all the way right up to your last frost date. Now there are a few crops that we can't plant that close to our frost date. So the longer growing things, things especially in the, the brassica family, which is cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower and things like that, those need 75 to 90 days in the cool weather. And so you really, those you're going to be targeting at that, you know, six to eight week time frame. A lot of the shorter things we can grow a little bit closer, okay? And often the time to plant cool season crops is as soon as you can work your soil. So as soon as the snow's melted and your soil is dry enough that you can work it. I don't want you out there mucking around in the mud because that's bad for your soil. But as soon as you can work that soil and it's dry enough that you can work those top few inches, then you can go ahead and get your cool season plants going, okay? All right, so what are our cool season plants or crops grown for? They are traditionally, the cool season crops are grown for either leaves, immature flowers or roots. Now there are a couple of exceptions to that. Peas is a cool season crop and we grow that for the seed, but everything else we're either growing for leaves, immature flowers or roots. So leafy greens, lettuce, spinach, all of those kind of things. Immature flowers is going to be stuff in the broccoli family. So broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, um, all of those are, we're, we're harvesting the immature flowers or the roots. So things like carrots or beets or even potatoes would be considered a cool season crop. We're not talking about things that are grown for fruit, okay? So those are warm season crops. So anything that has a fruit, so tomatoes or squashes or melons or um, peppers, all of those kind of things, corn, those are warm season crops and we can't plant them yet. We have to wait until our last frost date to get those in the ground. So we're talking about things that can handle a little bit of cold, okay? So let's, let's uh, talk about that. Um, hang on a second, let me hide this picture. I can't remember what my, yeah, there we go. Oh, just a picture of frost, okay. So frost is actually okay for most of our cool season crops. Um, these are hardy plants. They're going to be able to survive a little bit of frost. Uh, they're not gonna like really deep cold. So we're, uh, because I'm in America, I'll, I'll mainly talk about Fahrenheit. Um, I'll try and do some conversions here for you as well if you, if you don't live in the United States. But um, so temperatures below about 28 degrees Fahrenheit, which is going to be somewhere around negative 5 Celsius, that's when we need to start worrying about the cold, okay? So the, if you've got temperatures that are coming up that are going to be that cold, then you need to be thinking about like a frost blanket or something like that. But even on a, just a frosty night, like last night, it, it got frosty here in our area, and so I went out and threw a frost blanket, which is, a, they're, they're called heavy fabric row covers, and uh, I threw those over my plants just to protect them. It, it wasn't, you know, it only got down to like 32, 33 degrees, but why, why stress them out, you know? So my opinion is cover them up when, when you have the chance, but recognize that cool season crops are, are going to be okay with a little bit of frost, okay? All right, so what are they? We have some classes of cool season crops. We have leafy greens, we have the brassica family, we have root crops, and then we kind of have this catch-all other family. And so I am going to kind of go through and look at each of those. So um, before we get started on that though, let me just um, kind of, okay, we're just kind of checking. All right, how's everything going? Everything still sounds good. Um, looks like I'm trying to just see if Whitney's on and getting me. Sorry, hang on, guys. There we go. Okay. All right. So, yeah, here we go. Good. All right. So, questions are coming. Perfect. So, everything's working. All right. Okay. So, let's talk about these individual crops. How long have we been going? 14 minutes in. So, we'll go about another 10 minutes and then I'll let you guys go. Um, all right. And wow, 60 people here, guys. That's awesome. Welcome everybody. Okay, so let's talk about the different types of cool season crops and I, I just want to give you, you know, these, these all kind of have some general conditions that, that they're all going to like. So the first class is what we would call leafy greens, okay? So leafy greens are those crops that we're growing for the leaf, like lettuce, spinach, arugula. Now if you live, if you don't live in North America, then uh, arugula is often called rocket. 
um, Swiss chard, Asian greens, all the different Asian greens, things like bok choy and tot soy, um, Napa cabbage, all of those fall in there, endive, and then we have kind of all the more exotic greens, the dandelions and the minzua and, and uh, claytonia and mosh and all of those. So all of those leafy greens are classified as cool season crops. And with only one exception, they are going to want to grow below that 80 degree mark, okay? The only one that will sneak up above the 80 degree mark on this list is Swiss chard, okay? Swiss chard actually handles the heat a lot better than any of the other leafy greens, and so you should actually still be able to get some Swiss chard to grow in the summertime. It prefers the cool, and it will taste better in the cool, but you can grow it in the summertime, or you could let your plant continue to grow and just pick off leaves and, and it will do well. All the others, as soon as we start hitting about 80 degrees, we're gonna lose quality and um, taste and they're gonna to wanna to go to seed, okay? So that is the leafy greens category. Now let's move on to the brassica family. So brassica, that's kind of the scientific name for um, the family of crops that are related to broccoli, okay? So in that group, we have broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, kale, and collards are both, even though they're kind of leafy greens, they're actually in the brassica family. Um, kohlrabi and then Brussels sprouts all fit into that family. Also turnips, which we're gonna talk about in the root crop, they actually belong to this family. Mustard greens belong here as well. Um, so these are plants that mostly we are growing for that immature flower. So the broccoli that we eat is actually a, a, a seed head. It's a, it's a seed head. Cabbage, same way. If you were to let a cabbage go to, go to seed, that, that head actually comes apart and a flower comes out of it. Cauliflower, the same way. Kohlrabi, Brussels sprouts, we're eating those immature flowers. And these are generally a little bit less hardy than the leafy greens. Um, they don't quite stand up to as much cold. So if you have a cold night, I would definitely want to get out there and cover all of the brassica family. Now the only uh, exceptions to that would be kale and collards. Kale, like you can't kill it. <laughs> it's, it's impossible. It, it's super, super hardy. We've actually had kale grow all the way through the winter unprotected. And um, we actually, right now, we have about uh, nine or 10 plants that we're harvesting from that we planted last fall and they overwintered and are growing again. So kale, super hardy. Everything else in that family, generally we are going to plant, uh, we're, we're going to want to cover those if we have frosty nights, um, just to give them some protection. They'll, they'll handle down to about 28 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's better if you cover them up, okay? And the other thing about all of these, this family is we should also be thinking about planting these from transplants, okay? So instead of planting seeds directly out in the garden, we want to be planting these as transplants. Uh, kale and collards kind of can be an exception there. You, you could plant those either way, but everything else on this list and in this family, you really should be planting as transplants. And the reason why is because they take a long time. Broccoli, I've got a variety of broccoli that we grow that takes sometimes 110 days to mature. And if I'm not putting a transplant in, then um, there's no way that I'm gonna beat that heat, okay? So all of these you want, because they're longer growing and it takes longer for them to mature, you want to be putting transplants out. Unless you live somewhere in a really warm zone where you don't have um, frost, so like zones nine and 10, in those cases, you probably could go ahead and successfully plant outdoors, maybe even zone eight, um, depending on what your, your weather is like. But for the most part, I, it really is better to just go with transplants on all of the Brassica family, okay? All right, wow, look at that, guys. We're up to 72 viewers. That's awesome. Sorry, throat's getting a little scratchy. And it looks like we've got quite a few questions, so that's good. Whitney's humming along there. So I've got just a, a few more things to talk about and then we'll chat about the Gardening Academy really quick and then we will go ahead and do a Q&A. So, all right, so let's talk about root crops. Root crops are things like carrots, beets, radishes, um, onions, leeks, and shallots all fit in that category. Parsnips, potatoes, turnips, and rutabagas, okay? All of these are grown for the root 
or some variant of the root, okay? So carrots, beets, radishes, those are all we're, we're, we're eating the root. Um, onions, leeks, and shallots, a little bit different, um, but still we're, we're eating the swelling above the roots. Um, parsnips, potatoes, we're not actually eating the root on potatoes, we're actually eating a stem swelling. Um, so it, it's not part of the root system, but again, they grow underground. Um, all of these can be planted um, early in the spring. So they're, they're going to be very frost tolerant. Um, the only exception to that would be potatoes. Potatoes don't hold up against frost really well. So you're going to want to hold off on those a little bit longer. So whereas everything else you're going to be planting six to eight weeks before your first frost, potatoes I would probably hold off till maybe three or four weeks before just because those tops can get frosted and killed back. The plant itself will probably survive, but it's a little bit better if you hold off on those potatoes just a little bit. And then rutabagas, although they are a, a, a cool season root crop, they actually prefer, they need to mature when it's cool, and so they actually grow a lot better in the fall. So if you plant them in, in late summer and let them mature in the fall when it's cool, um, that's a good time for them. So all of these were growing for the root, and uh, we are going to be, you know, again, uh, really hardy. Uh, all of these are, are going to be super hardy. And, uh, and, and so you should be able to, to put those out pretty early. All of these you're going to be planting by seed with the exception of onions and leeks. Okay. So onions and leeks take a long time to grow, like five to six months from seed to final ready to harvest product. And, and so if you're trying to grow from seed out in the garden, you're, you're going to be very frustrated because it, it just takes too long. And so you should be either growing those from seedlings or from what we call sets, which are um, little tiny mini onions that have been grown partially one year and then you plant them the next year. Um, so either seedlings or sets are your best choice there. Um, not you're not going to plant onions and leeks directly in the garden you, you you do need to set those out and then of course potatoes we don't plant seeds we plant a potato and then those turn into um, the plants okay all right other crops now these are all considered cool season crops as well and uh, they will um, all do really well in the spring so we're peas um, celery now celery is one that really kind of bridges the the cool and warm season it it will do you, you want to get it planted early in the season but it's actually not going to mature until summertime um, asparagus is a perennial that we harvest in the springtime um, and then we let it go to seed later on cilantro and parsley both are herbs cilantro is definitely a cool season plant so you need to be planting it early in the spring because as soon as it gets hot cilantro is going to bolt to seed um, parsley is, is a good one that crosses over and then rhubarb is another perennial that we usually do most of our harvesting in the spring and early summer and then we let it grow and, and kind of reestablish itself as we go, um, go on. So um, that is kind of our other crops. Now my list is not 100% complete. Probably some of you have noticed that I've missed a few but um, uh, hopefully that, that kind of covers it. So let's see. All right, so really quick, I did want to go back. So let me go back on the slides really quick. How are we at? 20 minutes, okay. Um, we talked about Swiss chard being one of the plants that actually can, can go into the summertime. So it does well with the summer heat. Kale and collards on this list are also some plants that you can plant in the spring, but then let them go into the summer. They don't taste quite as good, but they will handle the heat and, and not go to seed. Um, on this list, uh, quite a few of these. So carrots, beets, um, onions, obviously onions we plant in the spring, but they don't mature until, you know, midsummer, uh, July or August usually for most of us. Um, carrots and beets will do well in the heat, especially beets. Beets will do really well. Radishes don't like the heat very much. Potatoes we plant in the spring and harvest in the fall. Turnips also don't do really well in the heat. Um, and then peas don't like the heat at all, um, but parsley and celery will both kind of cross over, okay? Now, really quick as we kind of finish up here, um, I did want to make sure that you guys recognize that um, even though we're, we're doing this in the spring, um, cool season crops, for those of us that have a winter, cool season crops are actually two times of the year that we can plant them. So we plant them in the spring, but you can also plant them in the fall. 
and our target time or our planting time for those are going to be six to eight weeks before your first fall frost, okay? So for example, I'll use my garden as the example. Our first fall frost usually comes about October 1st. So we start planting our cool season crops roughly between August 1st and August 15th. And it's what that does. We have to kind of baby them because it's still hot, but they grow up and then they mature when it's cool. And that's the key is we want, to, we want them to grow up and we want them to hit their harvest stage when the weather starts to cool off. Um, and so that's, that's the second time that you can plant those. It's also really beneficial if you think about doing some protection in the fall. Um, you can actually stretch that harvest out. We grow spinach, uh, we plant it in August and we're still harvesting from it in April and it'll last us usually till about the 1st of May. But we keep it covered in a cold frame. So um, fall is a great time to use cold frames, hoop houses, fabric row covers, all of those things to get us um, kind of extending. And so remember that we have two crops uh, with these cool seasons so we can do them twice a year, okay? All right, so let's um, let's just go ahead and take a break here for a second. There's 70 of us here again, um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and if you guys have got some questions, you can start throwing those up. And let me just really quick um, talk to you about the gardening academy. So let me turn this off for a second here. So uh, I want you guys to join me in the gardening academy. And the gardening academy is a great place for you guys to learn how to become better gardeners. Um, and I teach people in the Gardening Academy. We have about 50 members right now and we're, we're growing like crazy. Uh, we've been around for about a year now and so we have a lot of great stuff for you. And basically, I wanna coach you. I want to help you to become a better gardener. And, and so it's a fun opportunity for you guys to have some interaction with me and, and for me to be able to teach you how to become better gardeners and kind of share my experience. And so I love teaching and helping new gardeners and those that are inexperienced. And so I really would like to invite you guys to come and join. So what is the Gardening Academy? Um, included in the Gardening Academy, we have a Garden Foundations course, which is about a five hour long course that really kind of goes through all of the basics of gardening and really kind of helps you get a base. We talk about where to plant, what to plant, when to plant, how to water, how to take care for your soil, um, you know, the importance of weed control and pest control and, and all of that. And we come at all of that from an organic standpoint uh, and, and things that we can do to grow organically. Along with the Garden Foundations course, we have monthly planting guides. So I have guides for each of the different zones that will help you to know what you should be planting that month. Um, and so, you know, I, I break it up, up into the different zones and we have printable guides and, and everything for you. And then every month we have a focus topic uh, where we do a mini course. So for example, this month uh, in April of 2021, our focus was growing peas. And so we have about a 45 minute mini course where we do a deep dive in growing peas. Last month, we did a deep dive on cool season crops. The month before that, we talked about seed starting. And so we have right now about 15 mini courses and we add a new mini course every month to the membership. Um, on top of that, we have a private Facebook group and then we have three other full length courses, one on growing tomatoes, one on growing potatoes, and then one on canning and food preservation. So that's all of the stuff that's included. Plus, we do a monthly live Q&A session where you guys can get on a Zoom call with me and uh, we go through and answer your questions that are specific to your garden, which is really fun. That's actually happening tonight. So if you happen to join the Gardening Academy tonight, you can, can join in on that. So, okay, what is the cost? So the Gardening Academy normally costs $25 a month or if you wanna have a little bit of a break, you can pay $250 a year and that gives you two months for free. But, ding, ding, ding. Um, because we are um, doing this, this webinar, uh, I've actually got a, a special price for you. We are going to do, um, for the next 48 hours, you can sign up for $19.99 a month or we'll give you $30 off the annual price, so $220 a year. So um, that, that is a, a workshop special. We're gonna do it for 48 hours after this workshop is over and um, give you an opportunity to come and join the Gardening Academy. So. Down in the description for this video, there is a link that will take you out to the Gardening Academy. Lots more information so that you can watch and, and listen to a couple of videos and, and see what you think. I would really love to have you guys come and join. 
this is how you can kind of support our efforts to continue being able to do these free things on um, YouTube is by, by coming and joining the Gardening Academy. So I would love to have you guys come and join. Um, when you click, it'll take you to this page and all you need to do is just click that join membership and uh, that will get you signed up. So make sure that you follow the link in this description that will actually apply the coupon code and give you the special price, okay? And if you sign up today, you will get the bonus course that I talked about at the beginning, which is our five garden crops for food storage course. Um, if you sign up um, for that in the next 48 hours, I'll throw that course in as well. Okay. All right. So enough salesmanship. Um, I always am not terribly comfortable about selling. So um, let's, let's uh, go ahead and do some questions here. Okay. So Whitney has been... Um, she has been putting questions here in a little sheet for me so let's kind of go through and answer some of these questions okay all right and it looks like um, she's still working on them so we'll kind of just get started um, in fact give me a second here let me refresh this okay all right here we go so in zone 7b this is one of the questions in zone 7b is it too late to start a cherry tomato from seed um, I, I'm a new container gardener, and the one I started doesn't look like it's going to make it. Okay. In 7B, you're, you're probably a little bit on the late side, so, so this might be an opportunity for you to find a good nursery and, uh, and buy a, a, a nursery plant. Um, because we are getting, you usually need about six to eight weeks with tomatoes, even with a cherry tomato. To get them fully established, and and in seven B, I got to imagine that you're probably closer to you know three to four weeks away from your your last frost. So I would say probably in this case you you might want to just go ahead and and uh, and buy one. <laughs> unfortunately, um, and don't feel bad about that. I've done that a million times myself too. So um, in fact, we we didn't get some seeds here on time um, this year, and so uh, I've got some that I'm going to have to buy too. Okay, um, what do we do with freezing nights and hot days? Um, that is the dilemma with spring sometimes is uh, how do we deal with the, the big variations, okay? And, and that's where you really need to deal with maybe introducing some protection to your garden. So things that you can do to protect your crops from those freezing nights would be um, uh, fabric row covers or hoop houses or cold frames or if you really want to you know get fancy you could get a greenhouse as well so any of those will really help and then you're going to be removing those in the morning okay so you're going to take the lids off the cold frame you're going to vent your hoop houses or whatever um, to kind of deal with those so that you don't overheat the plants during the daytime and uh, and and it's, so until you kind of move past that stage that's kind of you just have to fuss with it so unfortunately um what about container gardening um when should you start dropping cool season plant seeds okay so with containers really about the same time frame the one thing that you do have to be a little bit concerned with is with containers is when you have a really hard cold night so something that's down below 25 degrees fahrenheit which is going to be what roughly negative 8 to 10 um, celsius if you if you uh uh, if you have a really cold night, those containers have less insulation than the ground does, if that makes sense. And so you, you, the cold will come around the, the pot and can damage the roots as well. And so in those cases, I may bring those containers in for the night um, and maybe bring those in and, and, and make sure that they stay cold. Okay. But other than that, um, the six to eight weeks before your first frost is, is going to be the same for containers. Okay. Um, Yes, can any of these be done in containers successfully? Uh, pretty much all of them. Potatoes, a lot, a lot of people have good luck with potatoes. It kind of depends on your environment. We have a very dry, we live in a desert, and so it's, it's pretty dry. Um, by the way, I didn't ever even tell this. We live in zone 6B and we live in Utah. Um, so uh, it's a little bit hard for us to do potatoes in containers because it's just so dry we never get any rain but but all of these really should do fine in containers um, even like the root crops will do okay uh, if you have containers you just need to make sure they're deep with the root crops carrots and, and things like that are going to need some space okay um, 
Potatoes, pros and cons of bags or in ground, okay? So I have done potatoes in bags and bins and clay pots, um, and I have never been overly successful with those. But part of that, again, is because we live in such a dry climate that, that it just requires constant attention and watering and, and we have busy lives. And so um, I prefer in ground um, and, and I have found that I have the best crops in ground. But if you live somewhere or you live in a situation where you're, you know, you're, you're around every day and you can go check those, those bags and containers, then go for it. Because I've seen a lot of people that have done very well growing potatoes in containers um, or you know whether it's the bags or pots or bins you know uh, there there you really can be successful um, but you have to you have to hawk them you have to really make sure that you're watching because they need a lot of moisture and you don't want them to dry out okay all right um, I have some collard greens that overwintered and they're starting to, to set seed should I pull them and start over, or can you continue to harvest and clip the flowers? You can, you can cut those flower heads, and it will slow them down for a little bit. Um, but you could continue to, you know, if the leaves are still tasting good, then, then keep harvesting them. You know, if, if they start to get bitter, which sometimes they will when the plant start, starts going to seed, um, then, you know, then maybe it's time to pull them out and, and start over. And I actually have some collards that overwintered this year as well. And uh, we're just kind of now starting to, to eat those. And, uh, um, you know, we're going to have the same situation soon. They're going to go to seed uh, as soon as well. So uh, get after them. Eat them as quick as you can um, because they are definitely going to want to go to seed. Um, and then, you know, you probably should get some more growing right away. Okay? All right. Root crops include garlic and it's cold hardy. Is that correct? Yes. The reason why I didn't include garlic in this video is garlic is actually planted in the fall and it overwinters um, and so it really doesn't apply to spring you, you, you shouldn't be planting garlic in the spring uh, if you plant it in the spring you're going to get very small cloves with very few cloves in the bulb um, so garlic is actually planted in the fall uh, and uh, and then it overwinters and, and gets kind of a head start so our our garlic is actually already about this tall it's it's almost a foot tall um, because we planted it back in, you know, the, the 1st of November. So, um, but yes, garlic is very cold hardy, and, uh, but, but you don't plant it in the spring. And since we're in the spring, I didn't include it on this, this video. Um, how do you know when rhubarb is ready to harvest? Um, I, I'm actually going to have to beg off on that question. So if somebody maybe could, uh, that has some experience with rhubarb, I absolutely hate rhubarb. Um, I, I don't like it at all. And so I've never grown it. Um, I, I, I honestly don't know when it's ready to harvest. Um, so hopefully maybe somebody can, uh, can help there. Um, I see in this question, so Whitney, maybe you don't need to pop this one in. When do you know when to harvest garlic? Um, actually go out to my channel. I've got a video on when to harvest garlic. It's when the bottom leaves start to turn brown. Um, then, then you stop watering and, and harvest those. So ZK, I saw that question. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's actually a video. I've got a whole video. So you could just jump over to my YouTube channel and search garlic and, and there's a when to harvest garlic video that will help you out there, okay? All right, um, carrots again. Can I sow now? Sown 8A. Yes, you should still be able to grow carrots um, this, this late in the year in zone 8A. Um, it's getting a little late, but you should probably be okay there. Um, okay, so we have carrots that were overwintered in zone 6A um, and they're growing again. Should I plant more carrots as long as they are in the shade? Um, so yes, but the one thing that you need to, those overwintered carrots, you need to get those eaten quickly because they are going to, um, they're, they're actually going to start wanting to set seed very soon, okay? So if they're, if they're starting to grow again, you need to get them dug up fairly quickly within the next few weeks because they're going to start putting up a seed head and when they do that then they get tough and not edible. So I would get after those overwintered carrots um, because carrots are what we call a biannual plant. So they grow the root in the first year and then the second year they put up a seed head okay, and a flower head. Um, and so that's what they're going to be focusing on this spring. And so you want to get them harvested now or they're not going to taste good. 
okay they're they're going to start splitting and and they just won't get uh, taste good so get new carrots planted and get the old carrots harvested very quickly um, put together some carrot dishes or, or something we're actually doing that same thing we have overwintered carrots we have about a row and a half left and we're eating carrots like crazy right now so uh, make sure that you do that okay um, what do you need to do for strawberries strawberries are a perennial um, and so they they're usually planted in the springtime um, best way to plant strawberries is bare root and uh, but their strawberries are, are really not considered a cool season crop they're, they're kind of a summer you know early summer crop or if you have ever varying varieties they'll grow uh, berries all summer but um, for strawberries the really good soil um, and protection from late afternoon sun is is really the the only advice that i would have for you on strawberries uh beyond that you know they're they're fairly carefree um don't have a lot of pest problems um and and then you just need to plan on uh, strawberries go about three to four years and then you need to replace them so they're perennial but they only last about three to four years and then they have to be replaced so um there you go um, when do you plant potatoes in zone 8A when you plant sweet potatoes okay so sweet potatoes are very frost sensitive so you can't plant your sweet potatoes until <clears throat> sorry getting a little scratchy here let me grab a drink <clears throat> sorry um, so sweet potatoes are very frost sensitive so you can't plant them until your frost is done but as soon as your frost is done and you, you don't have any worry for frost anymore then go ahead and get those um, those sweet potatoes planted. Potatoes are more forgiving. They are frost sensitive, but but they do a lot better. And so you can plant potatoes um, for you know a, a fairly extended period of time. We start planting ours in March and plant them all the way until June. Um, and and you can probably do the same thing. Although yeah, I mean so so in zone eight A, you could be planting them right now. Um, because you you shouldn't be having any problems there we, we're planting potatoes this coming weekend and we're in zone 6b so uh, you shouldn't have any issues there um, how do you water your cool season crops over the winter or in the early spring okay for us um, winter and spring are our wet season and so we actually don't need to be doing a lot of watering especially in the winter time so we don't water at all in the winter so from about mid-november until about mid well about the first of march we don't worry about watering at all and then we'll just let you know when it's going to rain or snow we'll open up the, the hoop houses or the cold frames and let it rain on them for a while and that usually takes care of it now when we do have some dry spells um i have to drag the hose out so uh, because i don't have my irrigation system set up yet because i don't want it freezing so we'll actually kind of uh, drag that um, hose out and, and water it by hand, um, you know, with just a, a watering wand or even a watering can um, is, is how we'll get those guys watered, okay? All right. Um, looks like we're about done with the list. Let me just really quick refresh my list over here, and then maybe we'll just look at the feed really quick. I wanted to keep this at about 45 minutes, and we are about 43 right now. So let's see. Um, okay, when can I plant popcorn, and is it the same as sweet corn? Yes, uh, at same time as sweet corn, um, and, and, and that pop, popcorn is a frost-sensitive plant, although it's less frost-sensitive than most warm season crops, and so you can plant um, maybe 10 days before your last frost. You can plant sweet corn and popcorn, um, and you should be okay because it's probably going to take about that long for them to germinate anyways. Um, so, uh, so just whenever your, your frost date is, uh, maybe, you know, maybe go a week to 10 days before that is when you're actually going to target, um, planting those and you're, you're going to plant them at the same time. Now, sweet corn and popcorn are not friends. Okay. So they don't get along. Um, and the reason why is because, um, popcorn, they cross pollinate and cro cross it's, it's one of the actual only crops where cross pollination will affect this year okay so if popcorn cross pollinates with sweet corn sorry other way around if sweet corn cross pollinates with popcorn it will ruin the sweet corn okay so you you have to you have to space them out 
either one of two ways, either time or distance, okay? So they need to have at least 100 feet between them, which for a lot of urban gardeners, that's pretty tough to do. Or you need to plant the, the popcorn early and the sweet corn later so that they tassel at different times because if they cross-pollinate, they'll ruin one another, okay? So corn cross-pollination will ruin the plant in that current year. So that's the one thing. And they're wind-pollinated, so you have to be careful. So again, either space or time um, so that they're, they're tasseling at different times, okay? All right, let's really quick um, just look. I think we're about done. Kyle, guys, we had a great crowd today. 70 plus people here. We still have 57. So um, any other questions? I did see a question. Strawberries can be eaten by slugs. Be careful. Yeah, that is true. Um, slugs and snails can be a problem with strawberries. We'll usually either put out um, a slug bait, which is called sluggo. It's an organic bait that we'll use or we will use um, traps. So we, you, can, you can bury like a cottage cheese container in the ground at ground level and you fill it with either lemonade or beer and uh, they crawl in and drown. <laughs> so that's, that's a good option, okay? All right, um, let me just refresh one more time, see if we missed any other questions. And I apologize, guys, the, the, the uh, I don't know, you know, I, every once in a while I watch a, a live feed from people that have like hundreds and hundreds of people. And I have no idea how they keep up with the questions because it's pretty tough just here. So green bugs on your brassicas. What can I do to prevent them coming back? Okay, so that is, um, Whitney says two more questions just popped up, so I'll, I'll try and get those. Um, that is most likely um, what we would call a cabbage lopper or um, it could be a cabbage worm. But either way, you know the little white kind of butterfly looking things that, you, that you'll see flying around, flitting around in your garden in the springtime? They're laying those eggs that turn into those bugs. And so really, you can spray them if you're into sprays. We're not into sprays, we don't spray. And so the only way to keep them off is to cover them, okay? So you're gonna cover them with a light fabric row cover and that will keep the butterflies from being able to land on your plants and lay their eggs. And that will also help with aphids as well, okay? All right, and then I think, what is the best soil for ever-bearing strawberries in a raised bed? Um, so raised beds, um, we use, in our raised beds, we use a mix of 50% compost and 50% topsoil. And so far, I'm liking that. Um, we've, we've been, we, we switched to that when we, we set up some raised beds here at our new place. And so far, I, I'm liking that, um, and it's doing well. The other option would be to use a mixture of peat moss, compost, and uh, vermiculite. Um, so you do a third, a third, and a third. And either one of those mixes should do well for strawberries. Um, a little bit of fertilizer, some organic fertilizer in the spring, it will definitely help with your strawberries and we'll help them along. But, um, you know, overall they'll, they'll do pretty good. It, it, you know, as long as you keep your soil amended with compost. Um, so, you know, I put compost in almost every year in my beds. And so you just keep that, that healthy and, and, uh, you know, you should be fine, uh, with about any, any, uh, type of, of soil. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. Well, guys, I think that we are going to call it a day then. Um, so we're at about 48 minutes right now. And I told Whitney to start bugging me if we got to 50 minutes. And so um, just don't forget that um, the special on the Gardening Academy that will get you a chance to join that for uh, $19.99 a month or for $220 annually. Um, that's a 48 hour special. So um, go down in the description and uh, click on that and you'll be able to uh, take advantage of that. Um, so I would love to have you guys join the Gardening Academy. It's a great way to support us here at, at Stony Acres and also a great way to learn. And, and by the way, the courses in the Gardening Academy, I'm not sitting in front of a computer. I'm, I, I'm out in the garden and, and actually teaching you out in the garden. And so um, it's a great opportunity, great chance for you guys to learn. And so I would love to have you guys come and join us, okay? All right, my friends, thank you. Uh, this was fun, a really good crowd. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that we'll have a lot of views afterwards as well. So let me know what you guys thought of this. And uh, I was thinking that maybe I would try and do 
maybe one of these once a month, maybe even twice a month. Um, I've got quite a list of, of different topics that we can cover. So if this is something else you guys are interested in, let me know. And uh, yeah, so I think we'll call it a day. All right, guys, thanks again for coming. And, uh, you know, go join the Gardening Academy. Uh, and uh, I think that's it. Okay, thanks, guys. Everybody have a great day, great week. Happy gardening.